Hi everyone, it's Willie here again from Recoma, and I'm back for part two of our realistic digitizing episode. If you remember in part one, I showed you how you could turn a selfie into a vectorized art using the Toon app, and then I uploaded that into our Chroma software. To check our part one of the digitizing episode, go down to the description below, and I'll have a link there listed for you. There you can also find a link to download a free trial of our Chroma digitizing software so that you can follow along with us. I almost finished digitizing my entire face and gave you a lot of great tips along the way which is why I'm back for part two to finish the job. Plus after I show you how to finish digitizing I'll show you how to embroider that same design on a decorative pillow and I'm 100% sure somebody will want your face on one of their pillows. Just trust me on this okay. <laughs> Alright so for the moment you've all been waiting for since last week let's jump right in. All right, now let's go over to the eye section and let's start with the eyes. First thing I'm gonna do is select the complex fill, make sure we are on the right color. And I'm gonna start off with the white because it is the background. Now you don't want to do the whole thing in white and then add this black lines and then the inside. So it's a lot of stitches on, lot, on top of a lot of stitches if you do it that way. So I'm just gonna do it uh, just exactly where the white is and kind of overlap it a little bit. So you can see I'm overlapping, but not too much just enough okay so let's select now the eyes one more time so let's make sure we change the density to 0 0.3 and go over to the underlay and deselect any underlay so now i'm going to go over to the inside and then the last thing i'm going to do is the black that's going to be the outline so for the inside i'm going to use uh, this same brownish color here i want to right click select our complex fill and overlap this a little bit. Now this is not a perfect circle, that's why I selected the complex fill. If it were to be a perfect circle, then I would go a different route by selecting the artwork tool and afterwards converting it to whatever stitch I want it to be. And remember to bring your bitmap over to the front so we don't get confused. All right guys, so now we're ready to go over to the outlines. Now what I'm going to do is the same thing I did with the lips down here that I used the complex fill, then converted it into a satin stitch. So let's go ahead and do the same thing here. So complex fill, make sure that you are on the right color. So we're gonna go to black. There we go, just go around it, just trace it, let go of the control whenever you don't need it. And let's just jump over to the other one. We can fix it right after. I'm gonna go ahead and select them, but as you can see, I'm selecting both of them. So by pressing this little plus key here, I'm able to see them individually so I'll just click on the first one go to our shaping tool right click on the purple line and add a hole now as you can see there's nothing I really could do here because I can't tell where to go by so that's why I always like to bring forward our bitmap and now we could do it again let's click on it let's go to our shaping tool Right click, add a hole. Add a hole here as well. And we're gonna add another one right inside. So I'm gonna zoom in and just kind of close this up a little more. Let me go ahead and delete this point. I don't really need it. All right, so now let's do the same thing to the other side. All right, so now we have them both done, but remember we need to convert them both into a sign stitch. So I'm going to unview the bitmap just so you guys can really see it. Let's go into both of them, right click and convert to a satin stitch. Now we can go and really edit them. So, but before we do that, let's take out the underlay and make sure that our density is at 0.3. So let's go ahead and edit them just a little more. Let's go to our shaping tool and make sure that we don't have too many uh, angle lines and too many um, split lines. So for example here, we have this one here that I don't need, so I'm going to delete the split line. And this one here, I'm going to put it over on this side. Now you can tell that I don't need this angle line, so I'm going to delete this angle line and I'm gonna edit this one to look like this. This angle line, I could bring it back. 
Now we can have a better angle of stitches on this side. This split line is good, this one is fine, and the rest of them look to be good too. So let's do the same thing to the other side now. All right, so you can tell I kind of went off the rails on this one. So we can just go and easily edit this. We can select these two and bring it in a little more. There we go. Now let's go back to the outline and let's delete this angle line that we don't need because we already have one here. Let's make sure it is exactly the same as the other one. Let's see if we need to edit some of the uh, split lines, but they actually look pretty good. Okay, so I think this is fine. Now, there is something I really like to do, and this is what's going to make your eyes look very realistic, and it's this white area here. This is very important for me because it really does stand out. So what I like to do is go over to my artwork and select ellipse and just add it right on top. Now let's go over to our selecting tool. Let's right click, convert it to a satin and let's make it white. Now like always, make sure that when there's something so small to take out the underlay and we can add a little bit of and we can add a little bit of a density here. Just put a 0.3. Now all we have to do is just copy and paste it. So right click, copy, right click, paste, and let's drag it over to the other side. There we go. Now let's see the difference. Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and continue with our outlines. So we have another one here. Now for this one, what I'm going to do is going to make it into a run stitch. And to make it look kind of thick, I'm going to convert it into a triple run stitch. So as you can see right now, it's just a regular standard run stitch. So let's go to our selecting tool. Let's go to the type of stitch and let's put a triple rope apply it and there it kind of looks like a satin stitch in a way but we could always uh, bring the stitch length uh, lower so it could be closer together so let's go to stitch length and let's put a 2.0 instead and there we go let's do the same thing to the other side all right now so let's go ahead and continue with the outline as you can tell we have a lot of this outline so let's go ahead and do those now we're going to follow the same process go to the run stitch and we're gonna start the outline. Now, they don't have to be super perfect right now. We can always go back and edit them, okay? I'm just gonna keep going and changing the stitch type and the stitch length afterwards. So I'm just gonna keep going and continue this. And I'm trying to touch it on purpose because later on we're going to combine these so that we don't have so many trims. So as you can see, this is just basically tracing the outline. I'm not doing anything special here. It's just tracing the outline, pressing the control button and holding it down whenever I want some angles and letting it go when I don't need the angles. So let's go ahead and do the last three. Let's select them by pressing the shift button, holding it down and selecting the last three. Right click and we're going to group them together so that we don't really mess with this. Instead, we're going to mess with the rest. Also, we're not going to be doing the same thing to these. So let's go ahead and group them. And now we can combine the rest. So we do have to select each and every one of these. So hold down the shift button and just keep pressing the down key and right click, combine. And now it looks a lot neater. So let's go ahead and change all of this to a triple rope. And instead of a 3.0 stitch length, let's go into a 1.5. I'm going to finish this up with the shirt, which is going to be the blue. Let's go over to our complex fill one more time. Let's select our color. It's going to be kind of like a matte blue. So maybe this one here. Okay, let's use this one here and let's just start tracing. All right, so let's go ahead and press the selecting tool and select the right color. Now, obviously, the outline needs to be in front of that. So let's go ahead and move the outline all the way to the front. So let's click on the outline 
and select move to the front on the top. And there we go. Okay, so let's keep going with the shade of the shirt. Like I said, you don't have to be really perfect. This is just a shade. The shade is not perfect, so it's okay if you're not exactly on the line. Just try to be as much as you possibly can. And there is a small one here. I'm gonna add this one. Maybe even make it a little bigger. So now let's see where we're at and see if we're missing anything. Let's go ahead and view the skin color again. Whoa, okay, so we're gonna change the skin color to something a little bit lighter than this. There we go. This looks a little bit more realistic. But don't worry about the colors because we can change that when we're selecting our colors that the machine is going to be using. So when we have our threads, then we can see what's gonna be best for us. Now, just to make the small edits, let me go ahead and change some things around. So for example, the shade looks just like the same color. So we have to change the color of that. Let's go ahead and select it and right click on the darker color. And there we go. We can always make the small edits as you can see here. This is kind of standing out. Actually, we can select all of these and we can use this tool to align it to the top. Now they're all going to be exactly the same. We can do the same thing over here. We can make all of these into a line and bring it, actually we're gonna bring it to the bottom which is gonna be here. All right, I think we're ready for selecting all the trims we need to take all of these lines out and all the ones that are kind of transparent, but they will come out if we don't take them out. So all you have to do for this is go to your selecting tool and you can grab everything, grab your whole design. And we're gonna go over to our commands tab on the right. You're gonna click on it and we're going to use the end command as a trim. You're gonna see how once I press apply, all of these will disappear. There we go, now it's a lot neater and the machine will do the same. All right guys, so it looks like we're almost done. So what I'm going to do, just to double check, I'm gonna view my bitmap and pressing the shift button and left clicking on the bitmap, I'm gonna move it to the side. This way, it'll stay on one either vertical line or horizontal line. So I'm gonna shift it over. Now I'm going to compare them. We are missing some kind of little details here. So if you want to add them, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to show you guys when it's something this random, you can just go over to your manual stitches and just make some random stitches and do the same thing to the other side. So how this works is that every time you, you left click, it'll add a stitch. Now let's make sure that both of these that I just put in there, that they're the right color. We're actually missing one more thing. This bright part here, let's go ahead and add that as well. So let's go over to the complex fill and this doesn't have to be perfect either, as long as it's very similar. Now we're gonna make that one into a lighter color, so like a lighter pink. Let's make this one soft pink and right click on it. Now really quickly, let's take out the underlay because this is a small detail, but let's add density and let's put it at 0.3 so that the other color behind it doesn't bleed through. Now one last thing guys, let's double check that we're gonna have trims everywhere. So let's grab it again and just to double check, let's go ahead and put trim. All right guys, it looks like it's pretty good now. Let's go ahead and see how this will look once it's stitching and maybe we can find something else. Okay, it looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and delete our bitmap and save it as a DST file. And there we have it. See how simple that was? Now you would typically see projects like this done with pets, especially for interior decorating. Unfortunately, this app only works for people, but everything else that I'm about to show you regarding the digitizing and the embroidery itself, you can apply to pets as well. All right guys, so these are the materials we're gonna be using for this project. We have our pillow, which we're gonna be taking the inside out. And then we have our hoop with our stabilizer. The stabilizer that I'm using is cutaway and I'm going to be using two sheets. While the hoop is actually a magnetic hoop, remember this is gonna be very flimsy compared to a really thick design. I'm going to try to do the best I can to not lose registration by adding two sheets of thick cutaway stabilizer and using my magnetic hoop. So like I mentioned, the first thing I'm going to do is get the inside out of this pillow, which has a zipper on it, makes it very convenient. We're just gonna be pulling it out. I'm gonna set this aside 
All right, so now we're gonna get our hoop. We're going to split it in the middle. And now the bottom piece, we're gonna be putting it inside. So what I'm going to do is first hoop just the fabric. So this way I can stretch it as much as I possibly can. Since this design has a lot of a complex fill and a lot of stitches, there's going to be the underlay, which is going to act the same way. It'll grab onto the stabilizer. And as long as the top fabric stays nice and straight, we should be good. So now what I'm going to do is get the top of the hoop, make sure that it's facing away because the sewing arm is gonna go in through here and now just place it on top. Now we want to make sure the fabric is as stretched as possible. So I'm going to be stretching it as much as I possibly can without damaging it. All right, so here you go. And now I'm going to put it in the machine. All right guys, so today I'm going to be using our TC model. This is a 15 needle machine, runs at 1,200 stitches a minute. If you guys wanna check this machine out or learn more about it, scroll down to the description below. There's gonna be a link there for you. All right guys, so let's go ahead and put the hoop inside of the bracking arms now. Make sure it's nice and locked in. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting the stabilizer from the back of the machine and under the garment while making sure that the garment isn't going to be overlapping through the sewing arm so that way it can be clear away from the needle. All right, so now I'm going to insert my USB and transfer the design from the USB memory to the machine's memory by clicking on file, choosing the design and pressing this button to transfer. Now I'm going to reselect my design over in the machine's memory. Now I'm going to select my hoop. In this case, I'm going to be selecting the E size. Now using my worksheet, I'm going to select my colors. Okay, now I'm going to bump up my speed to 1000 going to lock my machine, and lastly, trace the design. All right guys, so now that we're ready, let's go ahead and press the start button. Wow, it looks real nice. All right, now I'm just gonna put the pillow back inside, see if I can do this smoothly. And there you have it. And there you have it. Now you know how to easily convert a photo into a vector art and digitize it using Chroma Lux embroidery software. As I mentioned, this is a great project to do with pets to display in your home as well. All you need to do is convert your pet's photo into a vector art and upload it into your digitizing software and follow along with this video. If you want to do embroidery realistic portraits without the hassle of digitizing, check out our video on the eight inch panel, which now comes on the SWD machine and our new MT8 S20 needle series of embroidery machines. And if you want to see more great content like this or have requests for future episodes, join us on Facebook on Embroidery and Custom Apparel Mastery, which we now have almost 25,000 embroiderers just like you. Also follow us on Instagram where we have almost 25,000 followers and share helpful content like this daily. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time.